Is gold about to become the global reserve asset once again? So let's have a look at this new IMF working paper entitled Gold as International Reserves, a Barbarous Relic No More. So before we get into this working paper, I will put a link in the description below where you can download this and read the whole thing in your own time. But also let's just read this summary. So they say, after moving slowly downward for the better part of four decades, Central bank gold holdings have risen since the GFC. We identify 14 active diversifiers defined as countries that purchased gold and raised its share in total reserves by at least five percentage points over the last two decades. In contrast to the diversification of foreign currency reserves, which have been undertaken by advanced and developing country central banks alike, active diversifiers into gold are exclusively emerging markets. We document two sets of factors contributing to this trend. First, gold appeals to central bank reserve managers as a safe haven in periods of economic, financial and geopolitical volatility. When the return on alternative financial assets is low. Second, the imposition of financial sanctions by the United States, United Kingdom, European Union and Japan. The main reserve issuing economies is associated with an increase in the share of central bank reserves held in the form of gold. There is some evidence that multilateral sanctions imposed by these and other countries have a larger impact than unilateral sanctions on the share of reserves held in gold, since the latter leaves scope for shifting reserves into the currencies of other non-sanctioning currencies. Or should I say countries? All right, so let's get into this working paper from the IMF. So here you can see who prepared this working paper, uh, the names there. So just credit those names. All right, in its introduction in the third quarter of 2022, global central banks added $20 billion US of gold to their international reserve portfolios. This was the largest quarterly increase in official gold demand in fully 55 years, according to the World Gold Council. This startling increase excited much commentary taking place as it did against the backdrop of a secular decline in the share of global reserves held in the form of gold stretching over the better part of four decades. In fact, this increase in official gold demand is not as unprecedented as sometimes portrayed. As figure one left panel shows, gold as a share of official foreign reserves had reversed its earlier fall already more than 10 years ago around the time of the 2008-09 global financial crisis. Figure 1 right panel shows the swing from more countries selling gold pre-GFC to more countries purchasing gold post-GFC. In this paper, we seek to identify which central banks and underlying economic, financial and political factors account for this political or for this shift. So its two main hypotheses suggest uh, first, that gold is seen as a safe haven and desirable reserve asset in periods of high economic, financial and geopolitical uncertainty when returns on reserve currencies are low. Uh, gold also is popularly viewed as an inflation hedge. Uh, and then they talk about um, that gold is just a favoured due to customs and uh, tradition. And then secondly, gold is perceived as a safe and desirable reserve asset when countries are subject to financial sanctions and when financial investments are potentially subject to asset freezes and seizure. I also um, uh, quote here uh, for suggestions to this effect, see POSA uh, 2022. So obviously uh, looking at uh, Zoltan's work. So here they talk about other literature uh, that's done work on this. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of it here. Um, you know, going right back to, you know, 1969, uh, Triffin 1960, Bordeaux and Macaulay 2019, talking about Triffin's dilemma, uh, looking at the gold standard, etc., etc. A whole heap of uh, literature that's already been done on this. However, they say none of these studies brings the analysis up to the present as here. 
nor do they consider sanctions. And that's where we're going to see, I think, uh, this report go. So here in the report, trends in the gold share of international reserves despite its termination in 1971 of a requirement for official entities to convert their monetary obligations into gold at a fixed price. Gold holdings in the official sector have remained relatively stable. The share of gold in reported foreign exchange reserves trended gently downward after the turn of the century with the rising share of currencies reflecting foreign exchange reserve accumulation. An agreement by advanced country central banks to gradually liquidate some of their gold. There you go. Uh, that's something that we've been talking about for a long time. Uh, why countries like Australia and Canada, etc., have been selling gold, especially at the very bottom. Um, will they be buying it back at all-time high prices? We'll see. Despite this, however, gold still accounts for some 10% of total international reserves worldwide for a slowly rising share in recent years. And then figure two displays those ongoing trends. Uh, its left-hand panel shows that after moving slowly downward for the better part of four decades, the gold holdings of central banks have been rising since the global financial crisis. It also highlights the importance of distinguishing advanced countries and emerging markets, advanced economies, which inherited gold reserves for historical reasons, Gold holdings fell after the turn of the century. Advanced country central banks have sought to diversify away from gold, but gradually so as to prevent their sales from depressing the price of residual stocks. In emerging markets, in contrast, gold holdings, after remaining flat in the opening years of the century, have trended strongly upward since the global financial crisis. This may reflect low interest rates on major reserve currencies in the decade following the crisis, which diminish, diminish returns uh, or return differentials between securities and gold, or it may reflect gold reserves as perceived insurance against economic, financial, and geopolitical risk. So here's that chart that we just spoke about. So emerging markets after the GFC uh, increased dramatically. In fact, in the blue line on the left, you can see all countries and international organizations as well. And as of end of 2021, international organizations, mainly the IMF and BIS, accounted for roughly 10% of official gold holdings. Of the remainder, two-thirds are held by advanced economies and one-third by emerging markets and developing economies. The US and members of the euro area hold more than half of all official monetary gold. Among emerging markets, Russia, China, India, and Turkey are the largest holders. And here in this chart, you can see, uh, according to the IMF, the largest, uh, well, in order from the largest countries with the most reserves uh, in troy ounces. Uh, and then you can see the uh, percent of total and the percent of reserve assets and also the percentage of GDP. And uh, yeah, the euro area definitely owns quite a lot of that. But... On average, gold represents 17% of official reserves for advanced common economies. That's down from 80% in 1950, 7% for emerging, down 30% in 1950. However, I think uh, it's fair to say that that trend has changed, especially for emerging markets. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what the West do. And in this chart, you can see the top 20 gold holdings as a share of official reserves. And remember, this is all at the end of 2021. So it's not taken into account 2022 and the beginning of 2023. So, yeah. So here's all the country's top 20 gold holdings as a share of official reserves. So this is very interesting, this one. So this is the top 10 buyers and sellers of gold in the official sector from end 1999 to end of 2021 and the largest buyers russia 28 percent china 23 percent so right there well over 100 million troy ounces and then turkey india kazakhstan uzbekistan saudi arabia thailand poland mexico and interesting the largest sellers switzerland 34% France, the IMF, Netherlands, UK, ECB, Spain, Portugal, Austria, Germany. Uh, and 
also the euro area so very swampy those large sellers aren't they so this is also an interesting chart active diversifies into gold in reserve assets from 99 2021 so you can see on the left uh, by the end of 1999 uh, these countries here this is the uh, amount of gold and gold share and official reserves and then by the end of 2021 in the middle there uh, gold share of in, in official reserves so for example Kazakhstan has gone from 26 percent uh, gold share in official reserves to 68 percent so on the right the change in gold share in official reserves uh, Kazakhstan is up 42 percent and uh, yeah you can have a look at the other other countries there so very very interesting uh, to see and here you can see a chart of the BRICS nations share of gold in official reserve assets from 1950 to 1921 and um, yes everyone from 1950 to now have reduced uh, their share of gold in official reserve assets however that is turning back uh, and remember this is to the end of 2021 so Russia is rising in a very quick way uh, China's rising uh, I think we'll see India and, and, and Brazil and many, many, many other nations as well. So here's a chart, uh, a chart of indicators or determinants of gold's share in global reserves from 99 to 2022. And in the top left, geopolitical risk and economic policy uncertainty. There's definitely a trend uh, in red of global economic policy uncertainty uh, rising pretty much since the low the GFC so that's a clear trend uh, geopolitical risk there was spikes uh, around the 9-11 and Gulf War and you can see a recent spike there and then we got volatility of US dollar and gold price on the right um, yeah not much happening there correlation of gold prices and US dollar index uh, at the bottom left and then countries targeted by big four sanctions so there's obviously a correlation there with an increase in uh, gold share in global reserves so this chart here additional potential determinants of share of gold in official reserves also from 1999 2022 uh, on the left gold price we've got nominal and real and well from 1999 through to the GFC we saw a big uptick in prices both uh, nominal and uh, real uh, and then for the next decade it was well let's say volatile um, but now we've entered this new decade and well we're seeing that price spike again and then the bid ask spread of gold uh, it actually fell leading into 20, uh, 2008 and then spiked uh in you know the onset of the global financial crisis uh and then fell down into 2011 but then it's been on an upward uh trend uh since then and currently sitting around uh one percent at the moment so here's the effect of sanctions so recent events in you know what that country up there and that country over there won't talk about it have highlighted the possibility that other central banks may respond by shifting a portion of their reserves from foreign exchange into gold which can be repatriated and vaulted at home so this is what Zoltan's been talking about due to the freezing of foreign exchange reserves of a particular country's central bank uh, by you know the big four the west um, you know this this is now highlighted that that other central banks are likely to move towards gold or increase gold as their share of gold reserves and in this table 13 shows um, the 10 largest annual increase in gold share of reserves since 99 and in these uh, cases the countries in question were subject to sanctions in the same year or two immediately preceding years and then in other cases there was different events uh, which I won't talk about because I don't think the tubes will will like it the algorithms um, and you can see in this chart you know, the increase in gold volume and, and gold share as a percentage of reserves 
after or currently or, or two year proceeding after these uh, events happen. And then here are key events surrounding periods of active gold diversification. So you can see uh, some of these nations, um, sanction, sanction, sanctions, uh, you name it. Uh, it's right there. And then the chart goes down a little bit further. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of sanctions men mentioned in that uh, chart. And some more, uh, once again, uh, sanctions is mentioned uh, quite often in this chart. So the conclusions and policy implications for this working paper from the IMF pretty much sums up what Zoltan Posar has been talking about for what the last 12 months now. Uh, and I've done many videos on this as well. So you guys that follow this channel will know that uh, I've been reporting what Zoltan's been talking about and what I think is going to happen as well. So let's have a look at the conclusion. So using data for as many as 144 countries, we've analyzed economic conditions and geopolitical factors as potential determinants of the share of central bank reserves held in gold. Aggregate evidence suggests that some reserve managers respond to relative costs and returns. They increase the gold share when the expected return is high, while that on financial assets such as US Treasuries securities is low. They view gold as a hedge against economic and geopolitical risks. Gold shares in advanced countries and emerging markets are increasing with a measure of economic uncertainty, and those in advanced economies increase in addition with a measure of geopolitical risk. In addition, we find that reserve managers in emerging markets increase the share reserves held in gold in response to sanctions risk. Many of the largest year-on-year -year increases in individual central bank uh, central banks' gold holdings occur at times and those central banks are or have reason to think that they may be subject to financial sanctions. Our econo econometric results indicate that both the volume and value of gold reserves increases with the imposition of sanctions from the US, UK, Euro area, and Japan in the current or immediately preceding years. Whether and to what extent central banks will now increase the share of their reserves held in gold given recent events is anyone's guess. The results reported here should in any case allow interested parties to better inform their guesses. Well, let me guess. I'm going to say that we are seeing bifurcation happening right now and many nations are going to increase their reserves in gold, have their gold repatri repatriated, stored at home. Um, and we're seeing a lot of plays within the BRICS nations uh to have some uh settlement exchanges between nations whether that be in digital form and you know gold can be repatriated at a, at a later time or simply one can hold gold uh in in another nation but what we are seeing is a uh definitely a move away from um uh US treasuries being the big uh percentage of, of uh, reserves held uh, and I recall the Australian uh, Reserve Bank the RBA uh, talking about how they sold their gold uh, in the late 90s because it didn't earn any interest and at the time it made more sense to hold uh, US Treasuries because it earned a yield and so we as a country sold most of our gold and bought U.S. Treasuries. I suspect there's more to it than that, uh, but we won't go down that rabbit hole in this video. However, uh, we, I believe we are going to see a big uptick in gold as a percentage of reserves uh, in non-Western countries, that's for sure. So yeah, it's definitely not a barbarous uh, relic. It, it's not, um, yeah, it's not uh, just a pet rock, as some would say. So, yeah, give me the barbarous relic. I'll take it any day. Um, you know, and, and if there's sanctions on these countries, and that's one of the main reasons why they're uh, increasing their reserves, we do know, whether it's the Great Reset or whether it's central bank digital currencies, digital ID, 
Um, all these things coming down the pipe that are headed our way, which are going to be sanctions on us as individuals. Wouldn't you want to exchange your reserves into something that they cannot they, they cannot um, attack? Uh, it's why I like physical gold and silver, because it's analog wealth. It's analog. No one knows how much I've got. No one knows where it is. Uh, it's, it's out of the system. A lot of people will say Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but um, they can turn off the on-ramp and the off-ramp to that. And when a central bank digital currency does roll out, uh, they, they aren't going to allow anyone to trade or to convert their crypto into currency, into, into dollars to then buy other assets or to buy uh, goods and services. Um, they don't even have to ban it. They don't have to. They don't have to say that it's going to be some sort of. Well, only terrorists and crooks hold it, so you know we we need to outlaw that. They just need to turn on off the on ramp and the uh the on ramp and the off ramp. Now I hear the same argument for gold and silver, but you know what? I can take a silver coin down to uh, my local bakery. And uh, say, mate, exchange your silver coin for a few loaves of bread and maybe take it down to my fruiterer, exchange it for some fruit and veggies. I don't know how you're going to go down with your hard drive saying, uh, mate, I've got a, bit of, got a bit of Bitcoin on here, got a bit of Ethereum on here. Uh, can I exchange this for, yeah. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives, financial situation and needs. Mm -hmm.